Robin McKay, and I'm the advisor and founder of the Women in Science and Engineering program. It's called WISE. And before you rule out listening, because I only said science and engineering, and we have management and entrepreneurship in this class, right? Um, my team of students and I have expanded, expanded WISE to include women who are pursuing technology um, and entrepreneurship and management as well. So basically what WISE is, is a student organization and it's the premier leadership development program for women on the Polytechnic campus. Who's heard of WISE? I think everyone should raise their hand. Hans raises his hand. Um, and who's a member of WISE in this room? Yes. One out of three women so far in this room are members of WISE, so we'll see if we can turn it around. We also, by the way, the student organization has been very interested in starting a program, an analogous program for men. And they're calling it Wise Guys. I don't know where that's going, but um, <laughs> they're actually having the executive board for Wise is having a meeting in their next um, Tuesday, and they're inviting some of the, the men leaders on this campus to join them to start talking about how men and women can collaborate in this way, right? So I wanted to just show you WISE, the WISE web page, which is on the technology at uh, .asu.edu website. And I wanted to just point out a couple of things. We have um, women in this room. We have meetings every other two, every other Monday, excuse me, every other Monday from 4 to 5.30. And if you're not a member currently, that's okay. You can still show up. All you have to do is come over to the Career Preparation Center, which is right next door. And right now we're going through a series of interviews with very successful women in technology and entrepreneurship who come in and do roundtable conversations with you guys in a really intimate setting. So you get to ask all kinds of questions about where their, who their mentors were, what their career paths were, and it's a very inspiring series, so I'd encourage you to attend those. The next woman that we're interviewing is Ms. Penny, Penny Dolan, who's the chair of the Graphic Information and Technology um, Department on this campus. And man, she's a powerhouse, so you won't want to miss that one. That's at 4 to 5.30 on March 26th, right after spring break. The original mission of WISE was to guide, gather, and advance women who are pursuing STEM professions, right? Why is that important, do you think? To have guidance, gathering, yes? It's mostly dominated by men. Yeah, there are, and you know, even in this room, even in this room, there are a lower percentage of women in these programs. And the thing is that um, with women who are pursuing STEM professions, what happens, and I'm talking to you guys too, you need to know this as well, uh, what happens is that we lose women at every step of the pipeline, starting in about seventh grade, when math classes start being like so not cool to do well in, and you think you need to get street credit by, you know, kind of dumbing yourself down. Right? And I'm sure that none of the women in this room have ever done anything like that. But it happens at every step of the pipeline, from, from seventh grade to high school to college, we lose women. At the college level, undergraduate level, where we lose women is the first time you get a B in a class or a C in a class. Guys will say this. If they get a C in a class, guys will say, well, that professor, I couldn't even understand him. That was just, you know, that was just a really hard class. What women say is very different from that. Women say, oh gosh, I didn't do well in that class. There must be something wrong with me. I don't think I can do this anymore. And then they change their major to something easier. Does that make sense? Has anyone ever had that thought, I can't do it? Yeah, <laughs> in the back. So what I want you to remember is that C's get degrees and that your future employers don't care if you got a C on your transcript. But if you persist, that opens up an entire world of opportunities for both women and men to collaborate in new and different ways. What we want to encourage is innovative thinking, and the way that we do that is by bringing women and men together into collaborative experiences so that women have a voice and can kind of change thinking. But we can't do that by ourselves. Men are very involved with that as well, right? Does that make sense why men are involved with that? Of course. How does it make sense? Because when they get out of the real world, they're going to be working with men. Mm -hmm. Right? You know what I've noticed? Who's been participating in this conversation so far? This guy. <laughs> and it's, I'm pointing that out because that's one of the very typical things that happens in classrooms at the college level 
this is men are going to be the first ones to raise their hand. Even actually guys do this, like the question isn't even out of your mouth yet and the guys have their hands up. They don't even know what the answer is and their hands are up. And it's really true. I mean, guys are kind of conditioned and have this impulse to be first, raise their hand first. Women sit in the back of the classroom, whisper the right answer to their friend. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and never say it out loud. So when you work with wise and when you work with me, one of the things that I encourage women to do is to be able to stand up for something that they believe in, to raise your hand even if you're not quite sure of the answer. And especially if you are sure of the answer, raise your hand. And then the other thing that I teach women to do is how to, is to stand out, which means that you are able to be visible and you feel comfortable being in front of people, you feel comfortable using your voice. Not so that you drowned out the men who are already speaking, because that's just what guys do. It's not, you know, it's just what you do. I'm not asking you guys to change, but what I'm asking the women to do is stand up and come forward and add their voice to the conversation. So I want to invite the women to join Wise Guys. I want you guys to keep an eye out for the Wise Guys student organization that I'm certain is coming soon to this campus. And women, if you would, on the, um, the WISE homepage, just go down to the bottom here. There's a connect with WISE. You put in your email address, and you'll start receiving information about this program. Okay, so I'm going to finish talking right now. But before I go, I want to just ask everyone in the room to give me one thing that you're going to take away from listening to me today. And I'd like to start with a woman in the room, please. One thing you're going to take away. Yes. Speak up. <laughs> speak up. Yes. Raise your hand and speak up. What else? And now it can be anybody, of course. Yes? I have two daughters, and uh, both of them are very bright. But I can see when you were talking about uh, they don't tend to raise their hand. My 10-year-old daughter, she can be that way. Maybe this is something I can talk to her about or talk to my wife about. Right. Good. Anything else? And the women in my class speak up. Professors. Yeah, one of the things that I try, I'm a professor too. I, I teach classes and I'm a psychologist, so um, I just spend a lot of time working with interpersonal dynamics and coaching and um, just relationships in general. And one of the things that I ask professors to be aware of is who they're calling on. And just to say that out loud, say, I'm aware that the last three people I've called on have been men and then just be quiet and see what happens. And then, if you're aware of that, if you're aware that you're always answering the questions, it also takes courage to take a breath and let someone else speak as well. Okay, anything else? One more lady, please. I'm gonna get up and volunteer, which is what I was proud I did today. We had an assignment and I didn't understand it fully, but I still got up in front of the class and then worked with all my students and had Mr. O'Neill walk through the whole thing. Give her some knuckles for me, Lee. <laughs> Thanks. That was great, too. Well, I would like to introduce someone who's very special and successful, and I can't wait to hear more from her. Susan Brooks is here visiting. Uh, she's a successful entrepreneur who lives here in the Valley. And Susan, would you like to come on up? Hi. I um, don't like this. Hi, everybody. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. I don't remember using it. All right. Does it match? <laughs> Do they have it in colors? Not much people. I'll say there's an idea. Um, you know what? I I had a. I'm so glad to be here. I am so glad to be here. Really excited. Um, I had an emergency procedure happen on my knee yesterday, which, you know, I'm in denial about anything that slows me down. So I need someone with muscles, it can be men or women, to bring up that um, higher chair so that I can sit in there and not, unfortunately, walk around like I usually do. Thank you so much. So the first thing I'd like to do is congratulate you, wonderful teachers, wonderful missions, wonderful causes. Thank you. My hero. 
Um, let's do it right over here so I have my water and everything. It's perfect. Oh, doesn't that look comfy? Thank you. Okay. So is this on? Am I? Okay. So, and of course, you notice I'm not sitting. Okay. Well, <laughs> can't think that way, but it'll be there when I need it. So that's, that's good to know. Long before you even thought about being born, the world was a different place. It was really simple, manageable, and comfortable. And then everything changed. Technology was born and changed everything. You know, in, in our scope of history, you can probably count on one hand those individual people who really changed the world. Steve Jobs is one, obviously. Changed the world as the innovator that, that he, he was. And although his life was short, it was jam-packed with change and making a difference. Another person that made a huge difference was Henry Ford. And I think about that because when people were very comfortable driving their horse and buggy, and you know, and they had the, the horse whip that made the, the engine go, so to speak, you can imagine when that Model T first showed up on, on the world stage, learning how to drive. What you take very easily and casually, well, at that time, they didn't, know how, they didn't know how to turn it on and what it did and how you turn this and it moved wheels and all of that. Well, I have to tell you that's how I felt about technology coming into our world. And those people who know and love me anyway really think that this is going to be a stand-up comedy, that I'm here talking to you about technology because I have been in a love-hate relationship with technology when it first entered my life in 1980. So let me back up a little bit because people always want to know, how did I begin the cookie business? So my husband and I are the founders of Cookies from Home. Are any of you familiar with that store over on Mill Avenue? All right, Dan. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, even before then, the whole idea, the innovative idea of selling chocolate chip cookies and being able to feed a family was a, an unheard of concept. I was a school teacher. I taught high school English for seven years. I was in trouble all the time, another mark of an entrepreneur, because I didn't follow a state-adopted textbook. I had students that were hungry for stimulation and new ways of, of learning and understanding how romantic poets, Byron, Shelley, and Keats, was exactly like, at that time, Bob Dylan and Simon and Garfunkel and, and, and all, of, all of those. They were saying exactly the same thing. So I created a class called Rock Poetry, or Film Appreciation. How many of you ever saw the film Easy Rider? Anybody? OK. Well, that's what almost cost me my job. Because I was, te I was teaching how film is like a, a poem. It's filled with symbolism and character development and interesting plot reading. And so I thought having a film session over at a student's home on Sunday, their parents were home, we did all the research, we had all the criticism. But when I walked in on Monday morning, a parent had called, it was an R-rated film. I was a two-year teacher, I was threatened uh, with my tenure. This was back in the 70s, so all my students picketed and protested, you know, those were the, the days of that. Uh, and I was pregnant with our first child. So not only was my job at stake, I had to ask this uh, principal uh, to grant my maternity leave. And he did, on one condition. Don't, what come, he, back, come, don't come back to this school. That had a whole nother protest. Anyway, the point was that I had young children, and I was losing my mind by staying at home. I just couldn't do it. I, I wanted to be Susie Homemaker, but I felt like the world outside was just passing me by, and I had, to, I had to grab it. I had to get my teeth involved. So what did I do? My husband and I gave cookies. 
as gifts to those people who supported 